from Georgia. Mr. McCormick, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Abbs, you just brought up an interesting point about the ocean rising. How much has it risen in the last 50 years? Uh, I'll, I'll have to get back with you on that, uh, Congressman. Not not significant amount. Obviously, 50 years. Uh, since 1970, uh, what's the carbon emissions, the carbon content of the atmosphere? Is it greater or less than what it was in 1970? Uh, could you repeat that question the again? The carbon content, the carbon dioxide levels in the, United, in, in the entire Earth atmosphere, was it greater or less than it was in 1970? Uh, I would say greater. Do you care to uh, state that, bet money on that? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you uh, answer answer the question uh, either uh, that I'm right or wrong. Okay. <laughs> and uh, what what percentage of the atmosphere is, carb is made up of carbon dioxide? Percentage of the atmosphere? Uh, it's uh, a little over 400 parts per billion. So 0.04%, right? Of that, how much comes from uh, human beings? Um, about 11%. About how much comes from the United States? 14%. Of that, how much comes from trains? in the United States, 0.5%. So we're talking about eliminating 0.00003% of the year's atmosphere, carbon dioxide. Uh, that's what we're talking about. Is that a negligible effect when it's compared to nitrogen, 71%? Yes, thank you. So I love science. I love science. Let's talk about science, no, not as a religion, but as science, because that's what this is about and how much heat is produced when we have to produce massive amounts of electricity. That's what this is about. Do we want to hamstring ourselves by spending trillions of dollars based on some California code of a religion of carbon dioxide? Georgia's ports, along with the intertwined railroads and highways, and I'd say Georgia's famous for its railways for a long time now, are the epicenter of both Georgia and the southwest US economy. Ironically, Georgia typically benefits from California's outrageous regulations because we get a lot of business that move to our state because of it. However, California's Air Re Resource Board's CARB latest rule to make freight rail zero emissions jeopardizes the interconnected freight rail network. Meanwhile, the EPA's own study stated that freight railroads contribute to, what did I say, 0.5%. 0.5% of the total U.S. greenhouse gas emissions. I already talked about the negligible effect we began with. And if you, matter of fact, if you eliminate all the cars emissions in the United States, 0.000167%, in case you were wondering, is how much of the atmosphere we're talking about. Negligible, guys, that's science. If California received this waiver from the EPA for the proposed rule, it would allow California to dictate the emissions policy for the entire country at devastating economic impact. What could we spend that money on? If you want to have a scientific discussion about how we save the Earth, don't start with that. Because by the way, based on a Senate scientific study, Pluto, Mars, Jupiter are all heating too. Is it because of their carbon emissions? Of course not. Let's have a real scientific discussion about climate change. This, this is what's driving me crazy, guys. When we have these, these conversations, Mr. Jeffries, can you further explain how California decision would impact railroads, supply chain, and military bases in Georgia? Well, because we operate a nationwide interconnected network, whatever happens in California, whatever regulations in California are effectively national regulations because 70% of our locomotives move in and out of the state of California. And I should just point out that maybe most folks on this committee may not be aware, but we, we are, we are self-funded. We fund all of our own infrastructure, all of our own investments to the tune of about $21 billion a year. This is not coming from the federal government. These are business decisions that we are making. And so it has- Unfunded mandates, impact. right? Absolutely. Love it when the government does that. Mr. Baker, in your testimony, you mentioned that the California Air Resource Board acknowledged that their rule would potentially bankrupt the short line industry and stated that it is possible some of these businesses would be eliminated if they failed to comply. California sees the elimination of critical player in the supply chain as a cost of doing business. It's crazy. Uh, the Georgia Northeast Railroad is a class three short line that runs through my district. Can you speak to the unique nature of the short line business practices and why meeting California's mandate by 2035 is not feasible? Yes, sir. The Georgia Northeastern Railroad is a great example of a, a typical short line, but they're they're maintaining lines in small towns in rural America that are 
marginal, frankly, that you'd otherwise are at risk of not existing. And to do that, they have to run efficiently, smart, and clean. And so they do everything they can to get cleaner, including upgraded to cleaner locomotives when they can, but they just can't afford this mandate. It would force many of them out of business in California and if it went uh, national in Georgia too. So with that, I'm gonna rest my case that this is not based on science, it's based on California's religion that doesn't have any effect on the outcome of the atmosphere, that there is global climate change, but it's not due to trains. We don't need to spend, we don't need to put businesses out of, out of order and, and change everything based on California's idea that they're gonna fix the world with electronic trains. I'm sorry, with that I yield. Gentleman yields back. We'll go next to the gentlewoman from New York, Congresswoman Tenney, you're recognized.